In this video, we'll discuss a couple of the main applications of nonlinear systems to simpler models. So there's two main population type models for nonlinear systems. These are competing species models and predator prey models. And these are pretty easy to set up. And then that's why they're the main ones that are used to talk about these sort of applications here. So for competing species, what's the idea? The idea here is that you have sort of two species. We're thinking about a two component system here, but you could do this for more. And each of them grow on their own. This could be exponential or logistic growth based on how you set up the equations, but they grow on their own. They have their own growth rates. But there's a negative interaction term, right? The presence of the one species inhibits the growth of the other because they are competing over the same resource. So if there's a lot more of one group, that's going to sort of push out the other group because there's too many of them to compete for that species. You can think of this as sort of the two populations have to add together and they can only reach a certain threshold based on the, the carrying capacity environment, but they also can grow independently to try to reach that capacity. And they're differing growth rates and differing competition rates for this resource would implicitly interact with each other. So these equations will look something like, so for exponential growth, dx dt is going to be something like ax, there's your growth rate of the population, and then the negative interaction term minus a constant times xy, where this xy here models the interaction or the collision of these two species. In general, in writing a model, if you need things to interact or collide with each other, if the product is how often they collide. And similarly, dy dt is cy for its growth rate, and then minus a constant times xy as well. You add in a carrying capacity of logistic growth here, that would look something like dx dt is ax times k minus x minus bxy, where this k here is the carrying capacity in terms of x. And similarly, dy dt is cy times m minus y, and then minus a dxy as well. So both of these give the same idea of two populations that sort of grow on their own and their interaction is negative towards both parties. That's the idea of a competing species model for the system. And again, if you look, these are both nonlinear equations because of the xy term and also because of the product and logistic growth version of the model. The second type of population model is that of a predator-prey interaction. And here again, we have two species. This is much more of an asymmetric interaction than the competing species one was. So in this case, for the prey, they grow on their own, but interaction between them and the predator is negative for the prey because they are the prey. They, they get eaten and things. So interaction with predator is negative. On the other hand, for the predator, they will not grow on their own because they need the prey as a food source to grow. So on their own, with no prey at all, they will die off. But the interaction with the prey is a positive term because that is the energy that the population needs to grow. This gives rise to a pair of equations. Again, dx dt is going to be ax for the growth rate of prey and minus a bxy term. Same idea as for competing species. But the predator equation is going to have a negative standard growth rate or a death rate there but then plus a competition term or interaction term there. You could also use logistic growth for the prey population, something like dx dt is ax k minus x minus bxy. But the overall structure is the same, where you have the negative interaction term on the prey side, but the positive one on the predator. That's the main difference between these setups. One is negative negative, this one is negative for the prey and positive for the predator. So let's see how this all works together. Let's look at this equation here. It's written in a different form, but we'll see it ends up fitting the same model that we had before. What's this gonna look like? Well, I can see if I write this out, this will be x times three minus x minus xy, and y three minus two y minus 0.5 xy. So that's what we have to This is a competing species model. Let's look at the equilibrium solutions here. So what do I get for my solutions? Well, from the first equation, I get either x equals 0 or 3 minus x minus y equals 0. And from the second, I get y equals 0 or I get 3 minus 2y minus x over 2 is 0. So I can see three points right off the bat. I'm going to get 0, 0, 
I'm going to get 0 for x for the first equation, plugging in 0 over here, 3 halves for y. I get a 0 for y for the second equation, plugging into the first gets me x being 3. And then the intersection point of these last two, I can, for instance, solve for y over here. We get that y is 3 minus x and plug that in. You get that 3 minus 3 minus x times 2 minus x over 2 should be 0. 3 minus 6 plus 2x minus x over 2 is 0. So 3 halves x equals 3 or x equals 2 so that y equals 1. Now to classify these I need to find linearization and see what that looks like. And I have to do that four times, one for each solution here. So let's start by taking all the derivatives we need and then we'll plug in the points when we need them. So we're calling the f of x, y to be the x derivative. So x three minus x minus y and the g to be the y derivative, which is y three minus two y minus 0.5x, we can find the derivatives we need. So f sub x is going to be three minus x minus y times one minus x. f y is going to be just negative x. g x is just gonna come from this one term here, is going to be negative 0.5y. And g y is going to be three minus two y minus 0.5x, and then minus two y. The two from in here and the y from out here. So as a matrix, this is then going to look like 3 minus 2x minus y minus x minus 0.5y and 3 minus 4y minus 0.5x. So now we can see what's going to happen here. So at the point 0, 0, this matrix becomes 3, 0, 0, 3. That is a nodal source, eigenvalues 3 and 3. At the point 0 and 3 halves, I'm going to get 3 minus 3 halves there is 3 halves, 0 for x, minus 3 fourths, 3 minus 6 is negative 3. Eigenvalues here are going to be 3 halves and minus 3, so this is a saddle. For the next point at 3, 0, I'm going to get negative 3, negative 3, 0, 3 minus 0 minus 1 and a half is 3 halves. It's again a saddle, with lambda being again 3 halves and minus 3. And then we get the one point in the middle at 2 comma 1. That 2 comma 1, 3 minus 4 minus 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 here as well. 1 half y, so minus 1 half. 3 minus 4 minus 1 is again minus 2. This we're going to do a little more work on because it's not triangular. We can find the eigenvalues here. I get minus 2 minus lambda, minus 2 minus lambda, minus 1, 1 half times 2. So lambda squared plus 2 plus 2 is plus 4 lambda, plus 4 minus 1 is plus 3. This is lambda plus 3, lambda plus 1. So this is a nodal sink with lambda equals minus 1 and minus 3. We've seen how to analyze a competing species model, that it's going to be a competing species model. And we see in this case, we actually have source, saddle, saddle, and sink. So it sort of makes sense that in most cases, the population should sort of funnel into this nodal sink, and that will be a sort of stable, harmonious existence for these two different species. But that makes sense for a competing species model, where it's possible for the two species to compete, but still sort of live together in harmony and sort of funnel in in a sink sort of way towards that equilibrium solution. That's the idea of a competing species model and predator-prey models and how we can analyze a system to see if it fits which model and then see how those solutions look like and the idea of how those solutions might behave based on classifying the equivalent solutions to those systems of differential equations.